Media discourse online, particularly anime and manga discourse, tends to be extremely irritating, and has become more irritating for me as I've delved into the dark depths of Twitter. However, I've noticed two particular styles of discourse that tend to clash with one another. It's a topic that's a bit difficult to put into simple terms, so I have come up with a presentation demonstrating what I've seen as modern anime discourse. Pay attention, cause this will be the framework for today's video. So here we have person A and person B. Person A goes, X is bad because Y. Even though it's their opinion, what they said and the reasons they gave may be pretty flawed. Maybe what they said could have had a faulty explanation or demonstrate a lack of familiarity with what they're talking about or just in some way, shape, or form rub someone the wrong way. Either way, there's an issue with what the person said. Person B chimes in saying, no it's not, you just didn't understand it. A fairly repetitive argument within this community, but one that does have some merit. They probably did miss some nuances of the thing they're talking about, but instead of enlightening them through their perspective, they follow it up with something like, your media illiterate and stupid, bonus points for saying L take plus ratio. This throws their arguments under the bus because they've already proven that they can be pretty hostile over a work of fiction, and now person A goes, you're just hating, fans get too triggered over simple opinions, and now this has happened. Because person B has proven their hostility, person A does not want to listen to their points and just chalk it up to someone who can't take criticism. Who is in the right? Who is in the wrong? Yes, let's discuss that. What do you mean the fit is not hard? You, you're just a hater. That's all you do is hate. A great way to discuss this is using larger YouTubers. Because as we know, they are the scum of the earth because they are everything we're not. They're rich. They're popular, and most importantly, they have a massive influence on the broader social media landscape and the ability to influence public perception. So when they're talking about a piece of media, chances are anything they say might bleed into impressionable viewers taking their opinion as fact instead of watching the thing they're talking about for themselves and coming up with their own opinions. This has led to what some may call spread of misinformation, or straight up just very shallow takes being spread around online, which can often ruin the reputation of a lot of different pieces of media, specifically a lot of mainstream shonen anime. If you want examples of these, look no further than Plague of Gripes' Naruto video that is notorious in the Naruto community for completely misunderstanding the series, Super Eye Patch Wolf's Bleach video where he kinda does a similar thing with faulty data. A more recent example would be Tommy NFG's misguided segment on My Hero Academia in his Shows That Fell Off video, which resulted in a lot of criticism, most notable being a pretty big Twitter thread. Cosmonaut Variety Hour when he... Uh, when he talks about anything. It feels like a lot of people when they're faced with a large amount of backlash are very quick to call these people haters or rabid fans. A big example was when Moist Critical said some not very positive things about Luffy's character from One Piece. So some anti-tubers came to his aid by using the trusty dusty counterpoint. It's just his opinion, bro. And I mean, a lot of them are probably rabid fans, but I feel like there were a lot of people trying to actually criticize what he was saying and the anti-tubers in question didn't really seem to look at the bigger picture. There's a great video that actually tries to give his own take on the matter and actually criticizes Moist Critical's takes without sounding like a rabid fan. Chibi Reviews is a recent example of someone pretty prone to this. When the forbidden chapter of Chainsaw Man dropped, he was getting a lot of hate for certain things he said on Twitter. I'm not gonna get too much into detail because the chapter itself is pretty contentious and not what this video is about, but he takes a lot of the most extreme and toxic tweets to call those against him haters, ignoring the more constructive criticism. A lot of people were genuinely annoyed with some of the comments he made, but instead, he chalked it up to people just being mad because... He enjoyed a chapter. Calling out those who said he had no media literacy or didn't read, even though before he was just making fun of people by saying they didn't read. I don't justify any of the people on Twitter saying just really horrendous stuff. And I also do like Chibi and his videos. But it does look like to some degree that Chibi is playing the victim card, and it becomes even worse when he comes back to the drama rather than just moving on. It's easy to look at a lot of the backlash one gets and chalk it up to just people overreacting. But I also think these guys could learn and engage with the criticism they're given, and try to understand where people are coming from. Some people have, of course, such as Cosmonauts and Super Eyepatch Wolf, but this isn't going to apply to everyone. But here's the question. Why? Why don't these people engage with their criticisms a lot more than they do right now? 
Why hasn't Tommy NFG or Moist Critical or even Chibi tried to really understand the stuff they're talking about and where people are coming from? Well, I do have an answer to this, but I can see it now. Everyone is clapping. The audience can finally cheer. Thank you, Fumpus. Thank you for calling out these ignorant fools on their media illiteracy. And now it's time for you to fuck these guys over for not trying to understand the media they're talking about. And to that, my friend, to that I kneel. I kneel down on the stage and present to you my answer. I don't like you. <laughs> I don't. I actually really hate you. Bleach fans also do that same shit that Hunter Hunter fanboys do. If you don't like Wake Mundo or Fullbringer arc, you just didn't understand it. You need to, you just need to understand the art. Shut your bitch ass up! This is a side of people that are very educated, if you will. Unlike these ignorant fools in the AnyTube space, they've studied these series. They don't just pull out shallow opinions out their ass. They understand the complexities and nuances of Naruto. They've deep dived into the depths of Bleach lore. They have reread these manga so much that they can easily debunk the majority of faulty arguments and misconceptions that come their way. They are so educated that the only thing that they haven't studied are manners. Back to the Tommy NFG thing, because yeah, these points right here are pretty valid. The criticisms are valid. It shows that he didn't really understand MHA too well and that you yourself are very familiar with the series and have a lot of knowledge about it. But can you calm the fuck down? Now look, I get why y'all hate this video. Even though it's just a silly little video that's not really meant to be taken all too seriously, I think it's still good to criticize videos like this, and yeah, there are a lot of fallacies, if you will, with this video. Whether it be Tommy calling this a quirk when it's literally just Mount Fuji, or him using the fanbase as a reason to call the show itself worse, or just kinda coming off as if he didn't really put a whole lot of thought into this segment and just kinda used popular opinions mixed with, I guess, improvised rationalization of why the show is bad, there are many valid reasons to not like this video. I personally do not like this video. I made a whole thread about how I don't even like the first 30 seconds of this video. The past year, as in 2023, I feel like the spark of shows kinda left. Like, there wasn't any new notable shows that was peaking and everyone was talking about. Honestly, media ain't been the same since, like, 2020. With new notable shows that was peaking and What the fuck are you talking about? But come on, really? It's shit like this that's probably the reason why Tommy hasn't come out about these criticisms, nor does he want to engage with them, no matter how good your argument is and how much you understand the series compared to this buffoon if you act like an asshole they're not gonna want to engage with you you can make the greatest pizza i will ever taste in my life but if you poison that shit i'm not gonna eat it and you'll see a similar behavior go on against let's say trash taste or fantano just to name a few people it's not that these people hate differing opinions they just kind of come off as if they do. I get it. Some people just don't understand the shit they're talking about. Sometimes the lack of understanding can hinder their enjoyment of a piece of media and cause bad faith criticisms to spread to a wider audience of people who haven't seen it and will just abide by what they say. I get it. It's frustrating. But every time I go on social media, it's always the same shit. You don't understand. You didn't read it. You're illiterate over and over. I never like the argument that like that you just don't understand. I, I like you can understand something and still think it's dumb. You know what I mean? This type of discussion can inadvertently limit people from speaking their mind. There's a sense of almost policing people and sort of segregating what's acceptable to say about a piece of media, which should otherwise be subjective. It can make people insecure, including myself. I disagree with this pretty hard. I, 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 respect, I respect you for, for, for saying it loud and proud, so I like to hear. Let's think about these hot take videos, man. A lot of people are scared to be wrong. Because in a sense, yes, I was afraid of being wrong. Seeing how people act online when someone misrepresents their favorite series or doesn't understand the complexities made me very worried to share my own opinions. I do admittedly get worried about sharing a really strong opinion I have sometimes because god forbid what if I misrepresent something? What if there was a line or a moment in the thing I'm talking about that completely debunks my opinion resulting in me having an L take or getting cooked? 
As much as I feel Chibi could have handled his situation better, I do think the overall situation was completely blown out of proportion. While this manga does deal with heavy subject matter, I do agree with Chibi that it is important to separate the fiction from the reality. I remember there was one person, I'm not gonna say his name, who was completely honest about his takes on this one new series in Weekly Shonen Jump. You've probably heard about it, it's called Kagurabachi, and people were going nuts on him. Nobody was on his side. Now, were his criticisms for the story in question flawed, or maybe showed a lack of understanding? I don't know, I haven't read too much of it, but from what I've seen, it kinda seemed like it. But at the same time, this discourse is just actually insane. Like, you say he doesn't understand the story and don't even bother to actually tell him what he's missing and instead just opt to saying the good old, you're media illiterate, you didn't get it. Whether his opinion was right or wrong, good faith or bad faith is completely irrelevant. I just find this behavior extremely obnoxious and it really does seem like people just take media discussion way too seriously. It makes media discussion just not fun. So why do people online take these discussions so damn seriously? I don't think it's necessarily because they just hate differing opinions. Something that really caught my eye was this segment in the Trash Taste podcast where they guest starred Super Eye Patch Wolf and talked about a lot of fandoms, more specifically the Bleach fandom's reaction to the Fall of Bleach video. I was getting ready to use this video as evidence for why larger YouTubers like them aren't really grasping why people were mad at the video and like yeah i think to a degree they didn't fully address how the video caused a bunch of animosity and hate towards the bleach community but when i was re-watching the video there was a portion that i, I guess i kind of just erased from my brain i don't know but i thought it was really interesting it really relates to what i'm talking about you could make a video about yu yu haka show and it would be the video mm. on Yu Yu Hakusho. Yeah. yeah. Now you have channels that are entirely about One Piece, channels that are entirely about Bleach, Dragon Ball Z, and like it's these guys' whole lives like reading this manga and making content out of it. Yeah. Mm. But I think then the problem is when you try and make a video about it, then there is infinitely more knowledge about it and people who might like know the series more in depth and have more yeah. understanding yeah. yeah it comes into this thing where it's like you have an audience that wants a really deep understanding and then you want a bigger audience that just want to be entertained mm, yeah. yeah and i think mm. the disparity between those two can lead to i would say like a bit of bitterness with creators and like i i get it yeah. to a degree because yeah. like i made like a skit just like basically based around my experiences whenever i would have a conversation about the fate rabbit hole yeah. uh and that's when i started to see people not exactly mad about the video but mad about people's perception because of that video yeah. now because there are so many different factions so many different fandoms a lot of fans get very protective about this one ip yes he's right a lot of people online tend to be very overprotective of certain ip i can't speak for everyone but honestly i think they're just scared I think they're scared of watching their favorite series have misconceptions thrown at them, flawed takes, only for that to blow out of proportion as they watch the reputation of their precious series turn into dust. So they feel the need to defend their series at any turn even if it's just some run of the mill tweet and not something like an hour long video that would have way more impact on the series reputation. And to answer the question I brought up earlier, why don't these people engage with their criticisms a lot more than they do right now, I think it's simply because since they do tend to have larger platforms, they are met with so much feedback that it kind of makes it difficult to discern which comments to take seriously. People are just extremely relentless on online and even the comments that attempt to be more constructive still can have sprinkles of toxicity like I mentioned before. So to not risk one's self-confidence being destroyed, I feel like a general rule of thumb is to just not really take what others say too seriously. That unfortunately does have its downsides but it is what it is. People can be fucking dicks, okay? Even if they do have a point. Now, as much as I want to say that we should be nice to each other and explain our opinions with respect, I mean, I know that's not going to happen because it's the internet. Hatred and negativity just get a lot of attention. Whatever, I get it. But I do want to bring up, you'll never believe this. You're never going to believe this. There are ways to criticize people without condemning them. I know. What a concept. So you know what that means. <laughs> it's time for the moment you've been waiting for. Yeah! 
Yay, Giguk! We're gonna talk about Giguk again! I made this video a while ago, right? But for those who haven't seen it, the gist is I don't really like the way Giguk talks about anime, specifically shonen anime. And the reason I don't is because from everything I've seen, it just kind of seems like he goes with the popular opinion on any given show. So when it comes time for him to talk about it, he either gives a really fence-sitting take or just a regurgitation of what everyone else has already said about it. Which I think he does mainly to not piss off the broader anime community or, uh because he probably doesn't remember anything about the show, so he kind of has to go with whatever he sees on Twitter to keep the conversation going. And while it doesn't sound like that big of a deal on the surface, the reason it bothers me so much is because one of the things I really like about anime, or just media in general, is seeing people's differing opinions, their honest opinions, their hot takes, and things like that. So for me personally, it can be bothersome seeing Gigux fans praise and rally behind him for giving, honestly, just really run-of-the-mill takes. Especially when some of these can be considered by some of these shows' respective fan bases, maybe misconceptions, or even just shallow takes that can be further perpetuated due to his size as a content creator and give the series in question a bad rap. However, one key thing that really stuck out to me in the comments of that video is that whether they agreed with my opinion or not, they really appreciated just how nice I was in that video and how I criticized Giguk without roasting him essentially. Cause yeah, there is a reason why I was so apologetic during that video. Cause no matter how much deep down I felt like he was kind of bandwagoning and his takes just kind of irked me, I have to remember that this is a human being. At the end of the day, I don't know how he really thinks or if what I'm saying truly reflects his character. And my video has over 100k views, so even to a smaller degree, yeah, I got some influence too. And I should be pretty careful to not frame that video in a negative way, cause yeah, if I were Giguk and I saw a fat, meaty video about me on my feed with 100k views that could potentially affect my credibility as a content creator, yeah, I'd get pretty antsy too. Maybe some people won't understand the themes of, I don't know, let's say Naruto or Bleach. Maybe their takes might be shallow or misinformed, maybe there is something they're missing. But that's not always gonna change the fact that they just don't like it the way you do. And you're definitely not gonna change their mind by calling them stupid. Even though these people have a large influence and can be prone to popularizing certain opinions around something, for better or for worse, at the end of the day, we can't censor what they say nor change their opinion. We can criticize their work, I think that's totally fair. But if this particular video causes a certain show to get hate, I don't always think it's entirely fair to put all the blame on the creator because I doubt it was their intention. In other words, Bleach fans, stop getting mad at Super Eye Patch Wolf's Bleach video. Like, oh my god. We get it. He fucked up. But the Bleach anime has returned. It looks beautiful. And there are people online now more than ever talking about how amazing Bleach is, the themes, and yet y'all still get so upset when one person talks shit about Bleach and then you always feel the need to bring up the fucking Super Eye Patch Wolf video in like as recent as 2023? Like, you've won the battle. Let it go. Even the front runner for the Bleach community had to step in when y'all were going too far against totally not Mark of all people. Like, come on. I've been wanting to make this video for a while because I found this topic very interesting because of the way these sides bounce off of one another and how there's no definitive good or bad side. I mean, yeah, if you couldn't already tell, the you don't understand side of things is what annoys me more at the moment. But there's a lot more to both of them than meets the eye. Because I feel like... If we have the time to try and understand a piece of media, then I think we can use that time to understand one another. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Um, except these guys. Uh, these guys are pure evil.